Welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen. You've probably already seen the SRB2 Trash Bin series and learned that sometimes, just because you tried doesn't mean you made something good. From the amateurish and flawed level design of SRB2 New Horizon, to the outright disgrace known as the Kirby's Dreamland pack, to even the legendary Granifer Giganticus, who was so big that Eggrock Zone itself had to be changed so that he could fit into those troublesome zoom tubes. However, I think it's high time the Trash Bin took a vacation. It's time to see new sights, meet new people, and experience new game series. Sometimes you just gotta get out and see the world. The world's a pretty big place, after all. So why does our poor trash bin have to be stuck with one game? So... I've decided to breathe some new life into the trash bin name. Welcome, old and new viewers alike, to the Fan Gaming Trash Bin. So... What's the first Anonymous Every Two Trash Bin candidate going to be? Well, I decided to stick with something simple that everybody is familiar with. Pokemon. Everybody knows who Pikachu is, what a Pokeball is, and how a Pokemon game should play or should look. So it makes it easier to spot trash bin material when you're working with something so well understood and beloved by millions of people around the world. And that is why I chose Pokemon Orb by Hacker. Yes, Con Jr., he's a hacker. Now can you tell me his name? He's called Hacker. Alright, let's get into it. Pokemon Orb is a ROM hack of Pokemon Gold created in 2012, although if you looked at this game without that knowledge, you'd likely mistakenly assume it was probably made in the early 2000s or so. It's basically just the Generation 2 Pokemon games, but with a whole slew of bizarre changes, including some odd new fake mon to catch and some... interesting new characters to meet. When you first start the game, you'll notice right away that something isn't right, as the two options you're given are Starting and Setting. Anyway, once you're through the standard Welcome to the World of Pokemon intro, you'll spot a Pikachu is blocking the exit to your room. You'll obtain this Pikachu when you talk to it, so he must be your starter Pokemon, right? Uh, well, yes, but actually no. You still have to trek over to Professor Elm's lab to pick out a starter Pokemon, just as you would do in the original, unedited Pokemon Gold. You're given a choice between Magby and Elekid. Well, there's no real reason to choose Elekid, considering you were just given a Pikachu two minutes ago. Uh... Don't mind your rival standing in the trees, he's just... hanging out, I guess. Anyway, the road to Mr. Pokemon's house isn't too different than regular Pokemon Gold, although you'll find this odd cave in Cherry Grove City that has a... seemingly random selection of Pokemon available to catch, such as Gligar, Porygon, and Sneasel. Why these three Pokemon in particular? I have no idea. Maybe they're Hacker's favorite Pokemon or something, who knows. After retrieving the mystery egg from Mr. Pokemon and heading back to Cherry Grove, you finally meet your rival. Cloud Strife. The one from Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, that one. He's not difficult, as you would probably come to expect from a Pokemon game, but upon returning to the lab, you'll notice that you can name your rival as many times as you want. I don't know if this was intentional or Hacker really screwed up the map scripts this badly, but I find it funny that you have this much power over another person's name, honestly. Also, to all you Dunsparce fans out there, it seems like the Dark Cave Dunsparce was replaced with Houndour in this hack. Which sucks if you ask me, because I am one of those Dunsparce fans. This is like George Orwell's uh, book, 1984. Here's an interesting thing I found when I arrived in Violet City. For some bizarre reason, Hacker made it so you effectively have infinite money. You can buy as much useless junk as you want, but you'll never lose a single dime. Also, X defends are X defends now. This was a very necessary change, you see. In Sprout Tower, instead of receiving HMO5 Flash, you're given this Forest Gem item. I have no clue what it does, but it's there, I guess. After that, you'll arrive at the Violet City Gym, where you'll find, uh, this guy blocking the entrance. Sorry, what? The gym leader here is Draco, who is basically just Faulkner with Professor Oak's head pasted under the sprite. He also has his name and badge floating next to him at all times. How convenient. <laughs> and would you look at that? First gym Aerodactyl. So, get grinding if you haven't already. Or abuse the hell out of that infinite money hacker gave you. Whichever floats your boat. Beating Draco grants you the Fetter Badge, which is just a renamed Zephyr Badge, so it's nothing special. The next stretch of the game isn't too different. Grab the Togepi egg, head down to Union Cave, deal with Team Rocket- wait. What in the hot, crispy, Kentucky Fried fuck is this thing? Well, 
Remember how I said earlier this hack added a few new fake mon? This is one of them. To say Metal Onyx is overpowered is a massive understatement. Like, seriously, look how badly it mocks poor Pikachu over here. Pretty much nothing from this point onwards really stands much of a chance against it, not even the next gym leader, who's basically Bugsy if he had effort put into his team. Oh, by the way, you could just catch Celebi in Azalea Town. No event, no dungeon, you can just walk right up and catch the little bastard. As if Metal Onyx wasn't making this easy enough already. Actually, just kidding. The challenge here is not softlocking yourself on the way back to the Pokemon Center. This is genuinely baffling. I hit this stupid fucking ledge so many times during recording that I'm confused how nobody found this at all during testing. Was this hack even tested? Or did Hacker think a really easy to hit softlock that caused so much progress you hit it at the wrong time somehow wasn't an issue? I'm leaning towards the former, personally. After this, you go kick Cloud's stupid ass back to Midgar, trudge on through Ilex Forest, grab the NRG500, which is just a fancy new name for the bike, and go fight Whitney, or Hinata, who gets completely flattened by Metal Onyx. The next fun new feature doesn't show up until Ecruteak City, where you meet... your dad, who's a ghost for some reason. Yep. Also, the player character has dialogue in this scene. Yes, you! We're forcing these words out of your mouth whether you like them or not. Not only is this Pokedex entry fucking comedy gold, but so are your dad's stats. They're on the same level as that Metal Onyx you found earlier. Not only are his stats good, but so is his type. Ghost and Dark. No fairy type meets no weaknesses, baby. So that makes two busted, easily accessible fake mon in one hack. Simply beautiful. A work of art. Anyway, in the Ecritique Gym, we find out that Morty has seemingly died from cringe after seeing what happened to Johto. Nah, just kidding. It's the standard gym leader replacement shenanigans you've probably come to expect from this game by now. Him, despite his imposing appearance, isn't too difficult or interesting outside of a surprise appearance from Miss Magius, a Generation 4 Pokemon. Leader defeated, badge obtained. After beating him, you'll quickly notice that the routes headed towards Mahogany Town and Olifine City are populated with absurdly overleveled wild Pokemon, even compared to the trainers on these routes. Seriously, this is a huge jump compared to him's Miss Magius. On the way to Mahogany Town, you'll meet several green clones of yourself who all give you apricorns. Although, I eventually decided to turn around and head towards Olivine instead because after seeing how annoyingly flooded this region is, I decided I really, really, really wanted to fly. However, the absurdly high level difference between the wild Pokemon in both mine and the NPC's trainer Pokemon made navigating these routes a tedious slug. You can't repel the wild Pokemon because they're all 10 levels higher than yours, but there's no real reason to grind because the Pokemon trainers use are either at your level or weaker than your Pokemon. It's the worst kind of difficulty. Not much has changed here in Olivine City, although the sailor who originally gave you strength now gives you an HR berry. What could HR even stand for anyway? Home run? High resolution? Human resources? Oh god help us all. Although right now, Olivine City is little more than a rest stop on the real next destination of our journey, Cyanwood City. When you arrive in Cyanwood City, you'll notice this odd barricaded cave on the north end of the city. This man here tries his best to explain what this cave is, but... Yeah, the keyword there was tries. At the end of this cave lies... Wait, we already have a Metal Onyx, what kind of scam is this? The only explanation I can think of is that Metal Onyx replaced something on that earlier route, and Hacker forgot to change the encounter table to reflect this. So the beast this fat guy hyped up turns out to be something we've already been using for the last three gyms. Incredible. Anyway, this girl in the Pokemon Center claims to be a Dracula and gives you a Razor Fang. Uh, cool, I guess. There's also this guy outside who gives you a Protector and proclaims Rhyperior to be his favorite Pokemon. Then there's even this guy who gives you six... Sand shields. There's gotta be something in the water here, seriously. Unfortunately, I've got even more bad news. In the Cyanwood Gym, we find that Chuck has been diagnosed with red and has six months to live. I'm kidding, of course, as this is Ryu, who I'm not sure whether they're supposed to literally be Ryu from Street Fighter or just a reference. Outside of having a Tyrogue as his ace, he's not a very interesting fight. Upon defeat, he'll hand you the Fist Badge and a Dusk Stone for some weird reason. Alright, we're done here, now let's fly over to... Olivine City? 
Yeah, you'll notice we've actually been in the Forns region this whole time. Let's check out some of these great town names. Who could forget such classics as Festival City? Or Shiny Fit City? <laughs> and let's not forget my personal favorite, Therapy Town. <laughs> anyway, in the lighthouse, we find that Jasmine has been replaced with Mike, who was Will after I went into Paint.net and turned the saturation on him down to zero. It's the same little fetch quest from the original Pokemon Gold, so don't expect any surprises from this stretch of the game. The battle against Mike isn't too interesting outside of the Magnazone he has on his team. He gives you the Stainer Badge and a Metal Grip that evolves Pinsir. Huh, let's see here. Oh, would you look at that? Gilter just seems to be Pinsir but gray, and he has some extra spikes. He's also just Scizor, except for Pinsir instead of Scyther. Anyways, our journey continues onwards to the Lake of Rage. Although, accessing the Lake of Rage is several times more annoying now as you have to solve this cut maze to get to the lake. Or should I say the Puddle of Rage, as the lake has been reduced to this small patch of water within the maze of trees. After defeating the unchanged Red Gyarados, we find that Lance has been replaced with our old friend Gary Oak. Although he says the exact same things and serves the same role as Lance. The Team Rocket subplot that starts right now is almost entirely unchanged from the original Pokemon Gold. Although, the Mahogany Hideout has been made several times more obnoxious by not only removing the switch that turns off the alarm system, but also forcing you to take the slower left path that forces you to fight several wild Pokemon in succession. It's exactly as dumb as it sounds. Some other things you'll encounter here include this weird item blockade placed over these stairs, this executive only having a level 5 Elekid, and, uh, uh, this bizarre interaction. For whatever reason, the Mahogany, or er, Lymondan gym leader is using that one character from Pokemon Crystal who really likes Suicune. Again, totally uninteresting fight outside of owning a Generation 4 Pokemon. This time it's Mamoswine. So, then you receive the Icicler badge and an Ice Jeb of some kind. Let's move on. Anyway, it's time to get back to the almost entirely unchanged Team Rocket subplot. Other than the fact that Hacker moved the radio tower, there's not many interesting new things here. Points of interest in this arc of the story include this executive still only having a level 5 Elekid, the underground rival fight that's normally supposed to happen here, a power orb that's little more than a renamed amulet coin, and Pro Marco, who I'm assuming is supposed to be a Marowak evolution of some kind. Also, this executive has a Mewtwo, so be prepared. On the topic of legendary Pokémon, there's also this random wild Suicune near the end of Ice Path. However, because this is Pokémon Gold, Suicune is still guaranteed to run on the first turn, so good luck catching it. This happens to be the only new thing in Ice Path, so let's keep moving towards Blackthorn City. Or Flower Live City, as the game calls it. This funny guy right here gives you the stick bone that supposedly evolves Marowak into Pro Marco. There's also a wild Raikou here for some reason. My personal favorite oddity here awaits us in front of the gym. Hey, I'm seeing double! Four main characters! The Blackthorn Gym is grassier than usual, although another thing you'll notice is that nobody here seems to be using Dragon-type Pokémon. You'll see Beedrill, Furret, Sea King, and even Scizor, but not a single dragon in sight. Well, unless you count Aerodactyl for whatever reason. Well, you'll be glad to hear that Hacker finally decided to do something interesting with his hack and make this gym typeless. Claire's replacement, Ayumi, not only looks like Jasmine during her emo phase, she's also apparently the best leader master in the region. Whatever that means. By the way, you still gotta go find the Dragon Fang before you get a badge, although it's been renamed to the Special Orb for this occasion. Alright, we're almost at the end. All we have to do is make our way to the Elite Four and kick their sorry ass. Uh, hey, what what happened? Who turned out the lights? Oh, we uh seem to have our very first special guest appearance. Yep, I forgot to mention this earlier, but Missing No can be caught on the route south of Violet City. He's practically identical to how he is in the Generation 1 games, right down to his stats and typing. Now that we've dealt with that unplanned visitor, let's resume our journey to become champion. So let's top this trash bin Sunday by starting our challenge against the Elite Four. And here he is, the first member of the Elite Four, 
Will. But it isn't Will. <laughs> anyway, this is Roy, a purple gold doppelganger who, just like Will, uses psychic Pokemon. He's not interesting, so let's keep moving. The next member of the Elite Four is Grim, who plays in Twisted Metal. What the fuck is this shit? <sighs> okay, so from what I can tell, Grim doesn't have a type specialty. He has a seemingly random team consisting of Pokémon like Sandslash, Persian, and Arcanine. And I'll be honest, Grim was the most challenging trainer since Draco way back in Violet City. Granted, at this point in the game, that just means Ghost and Metal Onyx just had a slightly harder time sweeping his team. That's about it, so let's see who our next opponent is. Next up on the list is Black, who speaks with periods instead of spaces because he's just that cool, I guess. This also seems to be another Twisted Metal reference because he won't stop advertising it. I have never played any game in that series, so I'm totally lost here. Like Grimm, Black has a team consisting of seemingly random Pokémon such as Dodrio and Yanmega. Yes, Yanmega. Another Generation 4 Pokémon. <sighs> We're done here, let's go. The fourth and final member of the Elite Four is Claire, strangely enough. Like in the Generation 2 games, Claire is a Dragon-type user. She has three Dragonites, just like Lance, alongside her Kingdra that really likes to spam Smokescreen. That's really it, honestly. Well, we finally made it. We've endured so much high strangeness and weird unbound shit during our odd little journey, but... It's just about time for us to face the champion and claim mastery over this trash bin subject. It is time for us to face off against Gary Oak. Gary's team is oddly overleveled, even for this point in the game. His team is somewhere in the mid-60s, while every other Elite Four member's Pokémon never went over level 55. But it doesn't feel right for me to just explain the champion fight to you, so... I'll show you this entire fight. I'm nice like that.
And that's it. We won. We're finally the Forns region champion. But now that we're here, it's time to look back and really give my thoughts on the subject. This hack is one of the most bizarre things I've ever played. We've got nonsensical dialogue, painfully amateur mapping, ugly sprite work, bizarre and overpowered fake mon, questionable level curve, endless amounts of design oversights and bugs, and a whole mother load of unchanged vanilla content. This hack is certainly an unusual specimen, and whether this is hacker's first hack or not is unknown as his painfully non-specific name makes it impossible to find anything on the guy. My final thoughts are... This'll probably be a fun game to play with friends in like a VC or something for laughs, but it's definitely not something I'd recommend getting invested in playing to the end. And before you start asking about Kanto, yeah, I did play a small portion of it, although from what I can tell, Hacker really didn't touch it, and it's basically identical to how it is in the original Pokemon Gold. Besides, I consider Kanto bonus content anyway, so I'm not covering it in this video. Wow, that was a pretty exhausting one. Probably one of my longest videos yet. That'll be it for the first episode of Fan Gaming Trash Bin. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the funny bell icon for those notifications. See you next time for whatever weird thing I decide to make next. Ultraman Day is on the horizon, so maybe you'll see something Ultraman related. Stay tuned.